Okay, so what, it's not the, let me be clear about this, because, because this, is, this is something that is often misrepresented in, in my views. It is not the evidence for an advanced civilization that we find 130,000 years ago in America. The evidence that we find is evidence for human presence. And what they were doing was very much Stone Age stuff. It's a mastodon. It's a mastodon skeleton. that was excavated. It was actually found by accident during road construction near San near Diego. San, near San right. Diego. Um, and and the, the, an archaeologist was attached to the road construction crew and immediately stopped construction. And they investigated it thoroughly. And what they found was so much dynamite in the early 1990s when they found it that they decided not to publish at the time. Because what they found was evidence that those mastodon bones had been cracked open by human beings using tools and that the marrow had been extracted, that one tusk had been left standing upright in the ground and another had been left beside it, that femur had, a femur of the animal had been taken away completely from the site. Uh, and there was assemblages of, of uh, instruments that were used to smash and break the bones. And the conclusion of the team was that only one kind of creature could have done that work using tools on a mastodon, and that's human beings. That's classic, classic human behavior. So. This sets the goalposts in a totally different place. Suddenly we have to consider that humans have been in America for 130,000 years. We already know that a dogmatic approach of archaeology has rather refused to look at anything older than 13,000 years ago. And what it does is it generates an engine of demand that we need to be looking at those missing 100,000 plus years. We need to be looking at it hard. Of course, the immediate reaction has not been to go looking for stuff in the other 100,000 years. Mm. Most archaeologists have responded by saying this is impossible it can't be it can't be so but that's precisely what they said to Jacques Cinq Mars who said that humans were in bluefish caves in the Yukon 25,000 years ago and it's precisely what they said to Al Goodyear who said humans had been at Topper 50,000 years ago and they were both right and I believe that Tom Demeray and his team you don't get a big article published in Nature unless it's already pretty solidly based and pretty much peer reviews it has produced a reaction I would be wrong to say that it's universally accepted it's very much challenged what but is it's the intriguing it? what is the challenge the challenge fundamentally comes from we archaeologists know that there were no human beings in the americas that far back to put it in perspective it's about 60,000 years before the first evidence of human beings in europe uh, it's about 60,000 years before the first evidence of human beings in australia and this is just evidence of the first human beings yes we have to point out how difficult it is to find evidence it's of extremely human difficult to find you know sometimes we imagine that archaeologists are working with masses of skeletal material no they're not they're, they're not i mean the whole this is one of the ironies the whole clovis first dogma you would think that they had masses of material to work with they did have the tools but in terms of skeletal remains just what just mm. one single skeletal remain from Now, that period. one of the things that Michael Shermer had sent me was this uh, dispute that perhaps the bones had been cracked open by the excavation material. Yeah. By I the saw, excavation machines. I saw Michael's uh, e email, email last night, and I, I appreciate that Michael wants to continue to uh, in, engage with this subject, and that's his job. He's a, he's a professional skeptic, and, and it's his, his role to do so, but what he, what he misses out, it's true that a new paper has been published, which raises questions over the uh, what's called the Ceruti Mastodon site, which is the site that Tom Demeray at San Diego Natural History Museum uh, excavated. And what's interesting, uh, since I can, since Michael took the trouble to write the questions, can I just, sure, can I just read you something that I responded to on this? Sure. Um, which is that... Just do uh, it into the microphone. Also. Yeah, yeah. Bas basically, this, this, this paper um, was in no way a refutation of the original paper in Nature. As a matter of fact, the gentleman who wrote that paper never even looked at the archaeological remains that are in the, now in the San Diego Natural History Museum. Um, what it is, what he based it on is 
reference, I'm quoting from the abstract of the paper itself, reference to a freeway right-of-way map and construction plans, contemporary road building practices and worksite photographs available on the internet. In other words, the site was not visited. They simply looked at secondary references. They did not look at the archaeological material and they ignored the entire argument of Tom Demeray and his colleagues who had already addressed that issue. They didn't look at the bones? They did not look at the bones. When you, when you break a fresh bone, it has a character kind of spiral fracture that does not happen when you break a fossilized bone mm. and Tom Demeray and his team specifically ruled out road making machinery as responsible for this breaking pattern because they actually carried out experiments on uh, modern elephants deceased elephants and they broke their bones and the kind of fracture that you get in a fresh green bone is completely different from the kind of fracture you get in a, in a, in a fossilized bone so unfortunately this paper pays pays no attention to that it just looks at road plans and says there was road work there, it must have been done by road work. I think it's very sloppy, very weak, and uh, it's certainly not the answer. We can expect ongoing debate, and that is, uh, that is healthy, but this is not a strong case at all. So this points to the first evidence that we found and is there any effort underway to try to uncover more evidence that, uh, from a similar time Well, I'm, I'm going to cite uh, Tom, Tom Demeray, the, the chief paleontologist at the San Diego Natural History Museum. That's what he would like to see. Mm. He makes the point to me. I interview him. I, I, spent, I spent a day with him at the Natural History Museum. He was very generous with his time. I did an extended interview and I quote from it in, in America uh, before. And his wish is that archaeologists, instead of spending all their time trying to find ways to dismiss and get rid of his findings, his wish is that they would spend a little bit of that time looking at deposits older than 13,400 years and even being willing to go back as far as 130,000 years. That that's, would be a proper scientific response. Here is a thorough body of work put forward by a very senior group of scientists who hesitated before they published it. They had the information back in the 1990s, but it wasn't until refined dating techniques later than in, in the 21st century that they finally were sure what they had and that they published it in, in Nature in 2017. It's, uh, it's, it's, an, it's an important study and, and um, I think what's going to happen uh, is that we're going to find much more evidence of a very ancient human presence in the America. Americas, and that's what Tom Demeray thinks as well. Um, and as he points out, if we don't look, then we're never going to find. If we allow dogma to stop us looking and saying, oh, it's impossible that humans were in the Americas 130,000 years ago, so we won't bother to look. What a failure of science that is. And, and, and to spend all the time instead trying to get rid of the evidence that uh, doesn't fit the current paradigm. Well, it's so fascinating that just this fortuitous discovery during a construction site could change the way people perceive things. And yes. you just, you've got to wonder how much of that stuff is under, I mean, how deep did they have to go to find these mastodon bones? Well, so this is a, this is a road cut that's yeah. being made so those would be those would be pretty deep down 10 15 feet down the, the grader is going through and, and, and flattening them it varies from place to place depending on on soil deposition the mm -hmm. stratification the stratification of the soil but what the, the key the key point is that what you need to do is go deeper than 13,400 years ago and you need to do so with um, dedication and vigor uh, and and with some kind of funding and at the moment archaeology doesn't uh, doesn't see the point of that if um, the paper in nature uh, by Tom Demeray was alone if there were nothing else than that, uh, I wouldn't place so much trust in it. But I've spent a lot of time during the researching of this book with archaeologists who dig, did, dig, <laughs> did <laughs> dig deeper. And what those archaeologists all confirm is that there have been human beings in the Americas for tens of thousands of years. Mm. And it's not surprising that that can be pushed back to 130,000 years ago because part of the argument about the peopling of the Americas has to do with a place that we now call the Bering Straits between Alaska and Siberia, which during the Ice Age were at times a land bridge. They were exposed because of, because of lowered sea levels. But migrants who crossed that land bridge from Siberia on many occasions over periods of tens of thousands of years would find themselves confronted then by the North American ice cap, which oddly wasn't at the tip of Alaska, but began further in. So there was living space in a bit of Alaska, but you couldn't get through the ice mountains, these, these literally ice mountains, two, two miles deep, covering the whole of North America and preventing access to the unglaciated uh, parts of America. The thing is that what happened 
around 13,400 years ago, there had been a period of global warming and the ice sheets began to melt and a corridor opened up between what's called the Cordilleran ice sheet and the Laurentide ice sheet, the two major ice keeps in North America. And it's thought that the migration came through that corridor. Well, the thing is that exactly the same thing happened between 140,000 years ago and 120,000 years ago. There was an episode of global warming, an ice-free corridor opened up and the same opportunity to enter the Americas was there at that period than it was at the later period. And Tom Demery's point and mine is that we have to pay much more attention to that er earlier period. And that's really why I've gone ahead and, uh, and, and written this book, is to try to put before uh, a, a broad general audience, hopefully in, in language that, that, that makes sense, an, an assembly of all the latest information that casts doubt on the story we've been told. Because my goodness, if archaeology is wrong, about the story of the peopling of the Americas, if it's radically wrong, as it now appears to be, then our whole understanding of human history has to change. It's not just the history of the Americas, it's the history of the entire world. It has been an absolute article of faith amongst archeologists that civilization began in the old world.